Hello, and welcome to this second instalment of Sarastro's zombie painting tutorial series. In this episode, we'll be painting Toxic Zombies from Season 2 of the board game Zombicide. We'll be painting our toxic zombies using the same four-stage method described in the first episode of this series. Prep and spray, base colours, quick shade, and finishing touches. But we'll be adding two smaller additional steps in order to give our zombies a toxic green finish. Firstly, a green glaze, which we apply before painting on the base colours. And secondly, some light green highlights, which we apply as part of the finishing touches. We will also take a brief look at how Citadel's Nurgle's Rot technical paint may be used to add a toxic slime effect. For a more in-depth look at the four main stages of this process, please see episode 1 of this series, as we won't be going into them in as much detail here to avoid unnecessary repetition. With that out of the way, let's get started. As always, we remove any obvious mould lines before spraying on the primer. As with our regular zombies, I'm using Army Painter's Necrotic Flesh to prime and undercoat the figures taking care not to overspray the figures to avoid any loss of detail. Now they're primed and ready, we come to the first additional step in this process that will help give our zombies flesh a vibrant green tint, the green glaze. I'm using Citadel's Waywatcher Green and we're simply going to apply the glaze with a good sized brush to all the areas of skin directly from the pot and with no dilution. This is a pretty quick and simple step that shouldn't take too long, and we don't have to worry about splashing the clothes, as they're going to be painted over in the next step anyway. We can see here how the glaze imparts an almost luminous green hue, with little darkening of the miniature. The only thing to avoid here is allowing the glaze to pool too much in the recessed areas, as it can dry to leave a cracked white residue, as you can see here. Having said that, we needn't worry too much as the quick shade will do a nice job of covering it up later. Next we paint the clothes and hair. I'm choosing fairly bright colours to give the toxic zombies a more vibrant presence, but also because we know that the quick shade will darken the finished look in the next step. Just remember to always thin the paint with a little water. I'm using mostly paints from the base range by Citadel, as they have quite a high pigmentation, so give a solid colour in just one or two coats. Although some colours, like the white of this fatty's t-shirt, took around three to four coats. I'm using mostly a size 2 brush, and switching to a smaller size 0 for the finer details. For the fatties, I'm going to paint their spikes in a bone colour, using Ushabti Bone as a base, which I will highlight later in the finishing touches stage. It's worth trying to be as neat as you can when painting the base colours, but it's also worth remembering that mistakes can easily be covered up with blood later on. However, if you do stray onto the skin by mistake and want to touch it up, something like Citadel's Nurgling Green will give you a pretty close skin tone match that you can use to neaten up any scruffy edges. Here we see the completed base colours, with some of the main colours I've used labelled for reference, which means these zombies are now ready for the quick shade. With some white spirit ready to clean my brush afterwards, we now coat each zombie with the quick shade. Then, after coating all five, we go back over each one to remove the excess. Once we're happy with the way the quick shade has settled over the figures, we wait 24 hours before spraying with the dull coat to remove the glossy finish. At this point, you may like to add an additional coat of the green glaze to boost the vibrancy of the skin. If you do, take care not to allow the glaze to pool, 
otherwise you may find it dries to leave the white deposits mentioned earlier, like I've found here. If it does, a quick touch up with something dark, like this thinned storm vermin fur, will cover it up nicely. These are now ready for some finishing touches. Before adding the blood, we're going to add some light green highlights to really help make the skin tone pop. I'm mixing some moot green with a roughly equal quantity of white. We're going to hit all of the small raised areas of the skin, such as the protruding spikes and pustules we can see here. Notice we don't need to be too precious or precise to pick out those areas and create a nice sense of contrast that adds to the garish green look of the model. We can also highlight knuckles, elbows, as well as the nose, cheekbones and eyebrows, where we may need to work with a little more care. Finally, before adding the blood, we paint the eyes, and I'll be sticking with the same pale blue that I use for the regular zombies. For the spikes on the toxic fatties, I now reapply the obashti bone. Then mix a fair bit of white in to add an off-white highlight to really make them stand out against the darker green skin tone. If you're concerned about protecting the newly added highlights, you may like to give the figures an additional coat of the matte varnish at this stage, as we don't want to use it later on in order to preserve the glossy finish of the blood and slime that we're about to add. For the blood, I'm using the same Tamiya red with black and brown mix described in the first episode, and applying it with an old brush in the same way, varying the amount I use for each model, and covering up any areas of the base colour I'm not happy with. As the toxic abominations don't have many clothes, some additional blood at the base of the spines is a nice way to add some extra colour to the figures, and give the impression of the spines having recently sprouted out of the skin in a painful manner. For this tutorial I've also tried out Citadel's technical paint, Nurgle's Rot. This is a thick consistency, semi-transparent, high gloss paint that you simply paint on out of the pot as a final touch to add a suitably revolting slime effect. Because it's a shade of green, it doesn't stand out particularly well when used on the skin, but does look pretty effective when used selectively on the clothes, such as we see here, dribbled down this fatty's trousers. As with the blood, the Nurgle's Rot can be used to help cover up any untidy lines or mistakes that may have been made earlier on, although I would take care not to overuse it. Overall, I think that Nurgle's Rot is an excellent product that's very easy to use and when used selectively can provide a very effective finishing touch. Finally, you will most likely want to paint the base, in which case a mix of Mechanicus Grey with a small amount of white and a hint of purple such as Demonette Hide, should produce a shade that nicely matches the board. As a more classy, but structurally more delicate alternative, I'll be rebasing my zombies with the clear Litco bases as described in the previous episode. 
With that done, our toxic zombies are now complete. And amongst the horde, we can see how well they stand out against the regular zombies. Thank you so much for watching and for your ongoing support of these videos. As always, I will endeavour to respond to any and all feedback in the comments section below. Happy painting!